Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Stock Market Today. Ali Corman, Ed Carson here with a breakdown of the action in today's session and a couple of the notable stock moves today. Yeah, uh, good afternoon. Uh, we're going to take a look at uh, Cincinnati Financial and Schlumberger, which both flash buy signals, and uh, along with Wyndham Hotels, which did for a while. All right, maybe says something about the current market. We'll break it down. First, let's check in on those major indexes. So here's a look at the NASDAQ composite, which finished the day down a little bit by about one-tenth of a percent. Also on the downside, we had the Dow down about two-tenths of a percent, the S&P 500 up about one-tenth of a percent, and the Russell 2000 I'm showing, uh, showing a pretty strong day. Uh, so we are still within that bar from a couple trips trading sessions ago. So what can we really decipher from today's session, if anything, Ed? Not a whole lot. I mean, it was nice that we were bounded off lows. We gave up you know, a lot of the gain that we had yesterday, intraday. Uh, and then the Fed minutes came out around 2%, 2 p.m. Eastern. It wasn't like they were dovish or anything, but it was really like there were no big surprises. They, were, they, they didn't sound super hawkish before the CPI report that freaked everybody out <laughs> a few days ago. So that just, it, it came off of that. It wasn't like the, really the news was in there. It was just sort of like there was no surprises. But yeah, you can't, you know, until we get out of this range up or down, it's hard to see any of this is that meaningful. Yeah, right in there and on the on the downside now there. Uh, we break up above that, it would signal some strength. We, you know, we break below it, be really a bad sign. So, you know, even though some of these moves might be big intraday, you know, or even even at the close, they they aren't that meaningful right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're still keeping an eye on that 21 day line, the highest from last week that you've been great to point out. It looks like the 50 day and 200 day line are uh, close to crossing. Is there any significance to that or just those are levels that we need to get back above? Yeah, we call that the death cross. I mean, I mean, every, when we don't just call it, every, it's called the death cross, but uh, it's not a good sign. It shows you that the short-term trend, even at 50 days, is weaker than the long-term trend. And yet, it's a good point out the 21-day, because all I think all the major indexes are below that right now. Uh, so that uh, just shows you even the short-term resistance is there. All right. Well, we'll have to see if we can get back above that 21-day. And here, let's look at the S&P 500. Uh, looks like it is holding support right around its 200 day, which is good, but kind of a, a similar situation in terms of other resistance levels that it still needs to clear to the upside. Yeah. Again, yeah, nice that it held the 200 day line, but other than that, you know, still below the 21 day line. If it gets above those highs from early February, it's gonna basically be at the 50 day line. So. That'll really be nice to see. So if that gets above, then you'd start feeling a little more confident about the market. But, uh, you know, mm -hmm. we're not there right now. TBD. Okay, let's look at the Dow here. Uh, it looks like it is uh, just a hair below its 200-day line and that uh, 35,000 level here uh, and below the 50-day. So uh, we got other levels that it needs to clear, too. And let's also take a look at small caps. So we have IWM, the Russell 2000, uh, holding above. It's 21 day. But uh, what, do you, what do you think, Ed? Yeah, I mean, obviously this one, I mean, it's doing better in that sense. It, it, in the last couple of weeks, I guess it's done a little better. I mean, the market in that sort of reflective of the market breadth has shown a maybe not really great, but at least hasn't weakened considerably as opposed to lagging. But still, we're not that far from you know, the lows ultimately, and that's a 52 week low. I mean, the, the, the small caps have been laggards for a couple for a while now. So we would need to do a lot more right, to, to get us too excited about the small caps. Yes, that's exactly right. Okay, and now let's take a look at Cincinnati Financial. Ticker there is CINF flashing a breakout today. It looks like a pretty strong close as well on the heels of an earnings report that showed uh, some double-digit growth for both the top and bottom lines. So the gain today of about 6% volume behind the move too. Yeah, I mean, nice move here. I mean, I think we all have to be wary about breakouts. We were talking about that before the open. We talk about it on IVD Live every day, but you know, sort of had this long consolidation that it's been going through. The relative strength has been improving in a rising rate environment. Insurers, which put a lot of their money in their premiums into long-term, you know, bonds, and so 
you know, their, their premiums were set to make money in a lower rate environment. And so maybe they can make more money here. Uh, so, you know, that's all positive. Is it going to be, you know, change the world? Maybe not, you know, kind of thing, but it, the, some of these stocks have done pretty well right now. So, you know, that, you know, a nice, nice, nice reaction to earnings, see if it holds up, uh, you know, mm -hmm. but, uh, it's hard to get too excited about any breakout in this kind of environment. I think that's the thing, Ed. So, uh, so what do we look for next? Uh, a new consolidation, see if it can hold up. Like you said, I mean, it would probably take a while for that 50 day line to catch up to this one. Yeah. I'd like it to see it come back down closer to the buy point. Like, you know, you know, that buy point is okay. But especially if it pulled back a little bit, uh, in lighter volume, um, you know, in over a few days and then the 10 year, the 10, the 50 day line at least catches up a little bit. Won't seem quite as extended, but, uh, yeah, it's just it's just tricky. I think just in general, how can you have conviction about anything? I mean, it's like you don't. There's no real sense that the market has direction. So uh, we've seen a lot of volatility, very headline driven. Uh, and not to pick on Cincinnati, it's just uh, that's just with <laughs> with a lot of things. That's uh, <laughs> yeah, and maybe this breakout. If we that's the thing. If we can continue uh, to see these breakout failures are, you know, then that's, that's not what's going to give us confidence. If we start seeing more breakouts that work outside of oil and gas, I suppose, mm -hmm. um, then that would make us also feel more confident about the market. So speaking of oil and gas, let's go to Schlumberger here. It's had a nice move. It looks pretty extended on a weekly chart, but if you do go on over to the daily, looks like it formed a nice little shelf here, Ed. Yeah, and especially in this market climate, I wouldn't be suggesting this as a new purchase, but maybe if you bought it you know, on a breakout um, or some kind of trend line in, from that prior consolidation, and you, know, you want to add a little bit more, uh, you could. Um, there's a lot of reasons to believe that while, yes, shale companies are being very cautious with their capital spending, but with oil at 90 bucks, in a plus that they're likely to, to increase spending. And that's what, you know, belatedly you're seeing, uh, you know, Schlumberger and these oil field services firms uh, come up. Um, I will note that oil, oil, while it rose today in the official closing uh, in electronic trading, which starts around 1130 Pacific time. So there's still plenty of stock market trading time. Uh, it fell back as Iran made some positive noise about a nuclear deal, which might then lead to more crude output from or crude exports. So oil actually is down essentially for the day. You know, so you see USO coming down uh, as a result. So you know, Schlumberger came off its highs, but still held its gain. You know, relatively well. A lot of energy companies came down today. Uh, you know, this is. There's a lot of good reason, light reasons to think that this is going to have strong business, you know, in the coming months, uh, you know, to see if oil can, you know, obviously the oil price is going to be very important too. Yes, it is. Okay. And we've talked about a lot of travel related names in focus lately, whether that's your Expedia's and your bookings or all of your hotel groups, many of which uh, have had earnings this week or will have earnings. So Wyndham among them this morning with a strong report and the stock uh, right out of the gate breaking out this morning, but it closed flat on the day, Ed. Yeah, I mean, you sort of round tripped. I mean, that's what you want to ultimately do with your vacations, but not necessarily with a stock. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was sort of a wild action. And I mean, to be fair, it has moved up in recent days on other earnings. So there was some of that uh, coming up. It's just tricky here. Uh, I think their guidance was a little light, but we knew that, I mean, today. So it wasn't like middle of the day that said, oh, by the way. Uh, so um, looking at intraday, it started off weak but then quickly came up uh, and then was sort of gyrated, came up, came down. So it's just tough in that situation. I think, uh, you know, it would have been hard to, if you bought off of one of these strength after five minutes or an hour, you were going to lose, um, you know, you'd be down for the day. So that's just difficult. On a weekly basis, it's, it's doing all right. There's some nice trends in that regard. So RS blue line dot, you know, and, the situation. Breakouts are difficult, but I think even if you look at a daily, you could have done an early entry, but that would have been hard to hold because it sort of came back down to that early entry off of a trend line, came right down to that a couple of days ago, 
right ahead of earnings. That would have been really hard to hold into earnings. I mean, you could have done it, but you might have been then sitting on a 15% loss here. And as it turned out, not. Uh, so, you know, a lot of people who bought it today probably down a little bit. There's still reasons to be very favorable about the travel sector. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just tough to have a lot of conviction in anything right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, be wary of those breakouts. And if, if you do want to try it, I mean, because Wyndham has a lot going for it. Uh, so if you are wanting to try to um, you know, put money to work in this environment, uh, just uh, be managing that risk, right, Ed? Yeah. And uh, that's really just playing it safe. You know, just, you know, just know there's a lot of downside risk and just really, really be disciplined and know that this is not the time to be just all out there. Um, it's a very, it's a market to be pretty cautious in. All right. Well, thank you so much, Ed, for sharing your thoughts and great analysis today. And to everyone for tuning in, the team's going to be back with more tomorrow morning on IBD Live. Uh, for the one person maybe who might be curious or cares, I'm going to be out the next two days. So I'll see everyone I back. I care. Uh, you care? Okay, well, good. The one person who cares <laughs> already knew. And um, I'll be back on Tuesday because Monday is a holiday. So none of us will see you all on Monday, but we have more fun coming up later this week because we have Matt Caruso joining the IBD Live team on Friday. So that'll be a fun one. Always great to have him on. So make sure you check that out, investors.com slash IBD Live. And if you missed today's short selling webinar, never fear. We're going to get the archive up on investors.com. If you go to our videos section of the site, we have a playlist that's all about our past webinars. So you can check that out whenever you get a chance uh, starting tomorrow. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.